Okay, uh, I'm still a little bit sick, but I'm back for the impact review. Uh, first of all, yes, I heard the news that Kip James had been phased out as a non-screen character, and it was music to my ears. I was jumping for joy all day long. So why am I still wearing the shades, you ask? Well, you see, as I discovered with Destination X, even if Kip James is not on the show necessarily, there's still plenty of stuff that can be harmful to the eyes. Plus, you know, Rocka Khan is still there, Kevin Nash and Scott Steiner are still hanging around, and the overall state of the company continues to be pretty questionable. So, I think for the time being, you can just consider the shades a sign of protest until the company gets its act together. Anywho, about Impact. Whoever formatted the show this week needs a raise. Seriously. All right, okay, ordinarily the pacing of the show is so damn fast, you never have time to let anything sink in. You know, it's, 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 like, it's like rapid fire, just going from one thing to the next to the next to the next. You know, everything is rushed and segments bleed into each other, and a lot of the time the show just becomes a big schmoz. I don't know what happened at the TV tapings this week, but it was like a completely different team of writers who actually understood how to take their time and slow things down and pace things properly, took over for the night, and the end result was the most enjoyable impact in months. Segments got the right amount of time, the focus was exactly where it needed to be, pay-per-view matches were announced. If Impact was like this every week, the ratings would be in the twos by now. Alright, first, the AJ Styles Booker T confrontation. There were so many awesome things about this segment, I'm practically giddy just talking about it. Okay, Jim Cornette said that when Booker T signed that contract before Destination X, he was actually signing over possession of the Legends title belt to TNA which means that the Legends Championship is no longer just some joke title that Booker T invented. Now it's an officially recognized belt by the TNA organization. And AJ basically came out and said that up until now, that title was a complete joke. Because it was, let's face it. I mean, it was just something Booker T made up. It meant absolutely nothing, and Booker T was a paper champion. But AJ says that's all going to change because starting right now, he's going to make that belt mean something. And he's going to be a fighting champion, defend the belt against anyone and everyone, and make that belt stand for honor and dignity and respect, which means that finally, after all these months, the Legends title actually means something. Thank God. They couldn't have scripted this any better. Basically, in one segment, showing a degree of self-awareness that I did not think these writers were capable of, they actually acknowledged every criticism about the Legends title leveled at them by the fans and the pundits alike, and they fixed all all of them loved the sick absolutely loved it uh something else great about this show was uh, the beer money team 3d confrontation why was it so awesome you ask because for once the writers didn't overthink it and try to get too creative for their own good they issued the challenge they didn't throw out some stupid swerve or asinine gimmick or weird plot twist it was all just setting up the match of Beer Money versus Team 3D with them willing to put the TNA and IWGP tag titles up for grabs. It's for all the marbles, all the belts, just two teams willing to put everything on the line to find out who's the best tag team in the world. It was so simple and yet so easy to get behind. And Why can't we see more stuff like this in TNA? The only thing about this I did not like was how Beer Money punked out No Limit after No Limit just made their debut and had a, a really good match with the Motor City Machine Guns. Um, you know, it was like they build up No Limit and then immediately tear them down. You know, I did not like that part, but that's, that's you know, really a minor gripe. This segment was still great. Also, uh, I enjoyed the hype for Sting vs. Mick Foley at Lockdown. I think they built up to it really well throughout the night, and the promos before and after were awesome. Uh, it wasn't quite perfect, though. Uh, the match itself only got about 10 minutes, which was way too short for the quote-unquote biggest match in Impact history. <coughs> and the match wasn't even that good, either. You know, it was overbooked, and it was just about Kurt Angle beating down Mick Foley and arguing with Sting. You know, that's basically it. But the rest of it, the, the rest was excellent. And I think people will be excited to see Sting versus Foley at lockdown just because of the promos they'll cut and the history they have. I'm not necessarily looking forward to the match itself that much, but I'll cover that in a future video. Um, but overall, I was very happy with Impact this week. Best Impact in quite a while. Um, which is not to say it was a perfect show, however. Uh, if you're only going to have four wrestling matches on a two-hour show, then there is absolutely no excuse on Earth for those matches being so damn short. Bottom line. 
Um, Scott Steiner should not have been on the show. Uh, they should have just kept him off TV altogether, selling the injuries until lethal lockdown. Uh, as it is, they've got him completely covered up, you know, implying that Samoa Joe really fucked him up bad. So when he finally takes that get up off, everyone's going to see that Steiner is perfectly fine and not scarred at all. You know, it's, it's just silly. Um, uh, concurrently, I'm really not sure how I feel about the Samoa Joe Nation of Violence stuff with Sheikh Abdul Bashir. I think that came off a little more disturbing than it should have. Um, although it does seem to be getting Joe over, I won't deny that. Um, we're finally hearing Joe's going to kill you chants in the audience again, and it's been a long time since we heard those. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe they're onto something here. Um, Taylor Wilde pinned Awesome Kong in a tag match, which means it's probably going to be Taylor Wilde versus Awesome Kong for the title of lockdown. Not sure how I feel about that, to be honest. Uh, on one hand, it does mean that we'll, that we'll get a very good knockouts title match at the pay-per-view, which has not been the case for the last few months. Um, on the other hand, I really, sh I really think it should be Roxy getting the title shot at lockdown, and not just because I'm a big, I'm a big mark for her. Um, Roxy won the Queen of the Cage match at lockdown last year, so to have her in that match again this year would just be pointless. Plus, they could use her being in the title match to build the Queen of the Cage as something that creates future stars. You know, they could point to Roxy and say, hey, she was Queen of the Cage last year, this year she's fighting for the title. You know, what I would do is insert Roxy in there and make it Roxy, Taylor, and Kong in a Bound for Glory rematch, but I kind of doubt that's going to happen. Um, and yes, I did hear the news about uh, Dixie Carter pulling Roxy from TV for some reason. I don't know what that's about. But uh, I did ask Talon Thorne about this since he knows people who work in TNA. And he told me that as far as he knows, they just decided to not fly Roxy in for the TV tapings as a cost-cutting measure because she just wasn't going to be used for those, particular, those two particular shows. And he doesn't think there's any reason to be concerned about Roxy's job necessarily. However... I did send a politely worded email to TNA when I heard about this, telling them that I supported Roxy and to get her back on TV. And if you guys wanted to do that yourselves as well, that would be extremely cool of you. Uh, because when a woman is so popular that the live crowd chants for her not once but twice in the same segment when she's not even on the show, like they did when Daphne was getting beaten down by the beautiful people, that's a woman who should be on TV every week. If these writers really cannot come up with anything for someone who's as over as she is, then maybe the writers are the problem. But anyway, uh, aside from a few gripes, this was a very good impact. Email TNA about the Roxy situation. Catch my latest appearance on WrestleTalk on blogtalkradio.com. And I'll talk to you soon. See ya.